This next one, to me, it's something that's not talked about enough. It says, be angry, but don't sin. He starts it off again with therefore. Mm -hmm. So if we back up, we, we finished the last video talking about putting off the old man, putting on the new man, mm -hmm. renewing the spirit of the mind. Paul's going to say it here, because, because of doing that, he's, he's break, it's kind of going to tell us how to do it. It's more important how not to grieve the spirits, what the whole, to summarize it all. Mm -hmm. But um, so he, he starts off with quit lying. Only speak truth to your neighbor. You know, we're, we're all one members of one another. We're all unified in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we're all part of the same body. As we've talked about in other videos, we all have our job to do. We all part of the same body for function. So, yeah, and only that, speak truth to each other. Yeah, I mean, and it, as it, you know, the last part of twenty five right there, we are like you just said, we are members of one another. Why lie to somebody because you're really just lying to yourself? Yeah. And more importantly, you're lying to God. Yeah. And so, you know, as believers, as Christians, that's not something we should be doing. Mm-hmm. I didn't catch that earlier, and it just hit me whenever you were talking about it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, we've been we're taught not to lie from early age. It's also one of the Ten Commandments: mm -hmm. do not lie. You know, and it's some of these are stuff that we've been taught. You know, but this next one to me, it's something that's not talked about enough. It says, "Be angry, but don't sin." It's okay to get mad. It's okay to be angry. Jesus got mad in the Bible. He went in the temple and was throwing tables yeah, over, kicking turning, people yeah. out. Mm -hmm. But he didn't let his anger turn to sin. Right. I, I love that. I mean, because it's, I get to be angry. Yeah. It's okay to be mad. Yeah. I can be mad. I can be angry. But it's what you do with it. It's how you handle it. That's right. What you do out of it is, right. the, is the important part. That's exactly right. Yes, don't let it don't turn to sin. Don't let it cause you to sin. Um, I'm going to go down a rabbit trail right quick okay. because that that part of 26, be angry and do not sin, has a cross-reference back to the psalm, okay. which then goes to another psalm, which goes to another psalm. So we're going to go to psalms for just a little bit. Let's go. So the first one is Psalms 4.4, 4, again, about be angry and do not sin. Psalms 4.4 4 says, Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Mm -hmm. So it's telling you how to handle that anger so that you do not sin. Mm -hmm. Now, again, since it had the same thing, be angry and do not sin, there is a cross-reference there. And so I was like, well, let me go dig to that one and see what it goes to. And it takes us to Psalm 119.11. I think it was really important there. It said to be still. Telling you not to act out of your anger. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you want to know how to be angry and not sin, meditate, meditate and be still. Yeah. So then we're going to go to Psalm 119.11. And it says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Another way to, to not sin is to keep the word in your heart. As, as 4 4 said, meditate within your heart. What are you meditating on? Mm -hmm. meditating You're meditating on the word. On the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, 119 11 then goes to Psalm 37 31. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. And it has, uh, there's a script by slide, which also means slip. So basically, you have the word in your heart, therefore you will not make a bad step. The guide your steps, yeah. Absolutely. Then there was just a regular reference back from um, Ephesians 4.26 to Psalm 37.8 which says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. That's right. You know, and, and that's the case. I mean, you think about it. I'm going to use a husband and wife. There's many other quarrels, but a husband and mm -hmm. wife, when they're angry and they get in an argument, usually things are said that can't be undone. Mm -hmm. And they're only said out of anger. Yep. They're not said 
you know, you, you, you may not mean what you say, but when you do things out of emotion like that, you, then stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Um, and it causes harm. Um, so anytime you act out of anger, it's going to cause harm to you, to somebody else, uh, to somebody. Yeah. Um, you may, I may, maybe some bystander over here watching. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never know, but you act out of anger. It's going to cause harm. If you act the wrong way. I'll say the wrong way. If it caused you to sin, because we just talked about it, Jesus acted in anger also, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a bad thing. He was he didn't sin out of anger. So yeah, you definitely have to be careful with it, um, and that, that's what we have to learn to deal with it properly, mm -hmm. um, or we will do the devil's work for him. Yeah, absolutely. It, it opens the door for him. Um, and then it even goes on and tells us not to let the sun go down on our wrath. Do not hold grudge. Mm -hmm. you, you can't hold grudges. Grudges will destroy you faster than anything in the world. And it just, it opens the door for Satan. Yeah. You're just, you're just festering on yes. that anger. Yes. And it, it's not, it yes. does not hurting whoever it is that you're angry at. That's right. It's hurting you. That's right. I mean, it's going to hurt other people because of the way that you're going to react and the way that you're going to behave and respond to other people. Mm -hmm. But it's it's hurting you the most. Yep. You want to solve all differences before you try to lay down and go to bed. Mm -hmm. You'll sleep better. Mm -hmm. You'll shut that door on Satan. Uh, Satan can work in your sleep, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Well, and it just proves the point why forgiveness is so important yeah. because you get angry. And so, I mean... You know, forgiveness comes in, but as we've talked about in other videos, forgiveness is just as much for you as it yes. is for whoever it is that's, you're forgiving. I, a lot of times I'd say more so, but and, you're, you're right. And so that's, you know, how you combat that, that anger is, you know, is one way is with forgiveness. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we have to deal with things. It's okay to be angry. Mm -hmm. Don't let it let you sin. Yeah. Don't sin out of anger. Well, and as as you said just a second ago, because what it does is verse twenty seven, and it gives a place to the devil. And I always picture you see in the movies when somebody's trying to break in a house, they shut the door, and the guy sticks his foot there and blocks the door from uh -huh. being closed. That that that's that's what I picture when I read that. That's Satan. He's got his foot stuck in a door, and you can't shut that door. So now he can just come right on in. That's yeah. that's the picture in my mind. I don't know why, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, because it's not always easy. No. You gotta you gotta fight kind of hard sometimes uh, mm -hmm. to close that door. And then he tells us not to steal. Let him steal, steal, stole, steal no longer. But he takes it further. Not only one who was a thief needs to quit stealing. But he also needs to work to provide for himself so he doesn't steal. And provide for those with needs. So instead of taking somebody else's stuff for you, for you, no, you go to work, provide for yourself. But I want you to provide for other people also. The word labor, the Greek, the Greek word translated to exhaustion. And when I was reading the commentaries, that's basically what the, you know, you should go and you should labor until, until you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, we're, and, and what I wrote is we are to work to get things to give to those in need, which is what you just said. But my little uh, note in a bow over here, I love this because it's a play on words. In this terms, we get things to give mm -hmm. things. Right. A thing that I'm working on really hard right now that is, it's absolutely phenomenal is a mindset shift of get to give. Get to give. And it's also changing those two words. Or really not necessarily give and get, but it's, you know, I'm focusing on the get. I get to go do this. Yes. I get to okay. go do that. I thought that's where I you were going. I get to go I do thought this. that's where you're going. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. I get to do these things. I don't things. have to do these things. I get It's not to. I have to. I, I get, get to. to. And it, it really changes. It's changed my outlook and it's changed my, just your whole attitude. Yeah. Because you, it it's super hard for me to yeah. say, I get to go do something and be upset about it. That's right. Yeah. When I have to do it. Like, uh huh. You know. And a lot of us don't like to be told what yeah. to do. So we if always I have to. I have to go to work. I get to go fishing. Yeah, exactly. 
I yeah. mean, so it's, you know, it it's just so amazing. But I, mm-hmm. as far as the scripture in, in this terms, it's, you know, it's, I, I get things to give them. Mm-hmm. I get to get things to give. Mm-hmm. Thing. Yeah. And, you know, something I completely glossed over when I did my study and just looking through it here, this really stuck out. It tells in a labor working with his hands what is good. It specifies what is good because here you got a thief. He uses his hands. That's how you mm-hmm. steal stuff. No. Now I want you to use your hands for good. For, for I just, good. Yeah, I just, yeah, no, that's awesome. I, that's, I completely glossed over what I did my study and it just jumped off the page there. So, yeah, he specified. Mm-hmm. You're still working with your hands. Just do for what's good now, not 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 what's bad. Absolutely. This one's a tough one. I I mean it's it's so it's so tough, but it's so it's rooted so deep. Mm-hmm. Uh, verse twenty nine: Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. What comes out of our mouth matters. Part of my prayer is that the Holy Spirit would fill me, and fill me so much so that I'm overflowing. Right. And that that overflowing is my outpouring and my my works and my speech and everything that comes out of me mm-hmm. would be a derivative of the Holy Spirit because that's what I'm full of. Right. However, come on now, come on. Also, what comes out of your mouth is what comes from your heart, and as we just read in previous um, verses is to have the word in your heart. And that is the way that you're going to overflow with those things. Yep. Study and meditate on the word. Mm-hmm. Right Ask the heart. Holy Spirit to fill you mm-hmm. and that you may overflow with what is good. There it is again. Yep. yep. What is good. So talk, talking bad about people never... It's a good thing. No. You don't have to agree. You ain't got to like them. You ain't got to agree with them. Mm-hmm. You don't have to like what they do. Again, it's like you just um, said. If you don't have anything anything nice to say about them, just don't say anything at all. No. And there are ways to express your discontent for somebody without mm-hmm. talking bad about them. In all straightforwardness, it's like if, if it's not something you're willing to say to that person, you shouldn't say it about that person. Not at all. Not at all. Not I mean, if you're willing to talk bad about them and you're willing to talk bad about them to their face, I mean, that that's between you and them. That's a whole different story. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, at least you ha- at least they're in the game. Yeah, at least at least they're, they're there to defend themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But again, what comes out of your mouth? What is good for necessary edification? So is there a way to express discontent or something with somebody that will edify them and build them up? I would think there is. There, I'm sure there is. We, we have a term for it. We call it constructive criticism. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's all in the delivery. Mm-hmm. It's all in the delivery. Verse 30, do not grieve the Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. What do you mean? How do I grieve the Holy Spirit? I'm glad I asked. Everything we talked about, verse 25 through 29, that's what he's describing, gr- grieving the spirit. You know, anytime you act like that, anytime you're self seeking, you're grieving the spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the second half of verse 30, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption, it just. Mm-hmm. It hits me. I, I this is the second or third time since we started this study all the way back to Romans that I that we've come across that phrase, and mm-hmm. it just I love that you're sealed in by the Holy Spirit. Keep putting on that new man, as we said in the last video. Yeah, I mean, you get better at him. Thirty one just keeps talking about you know we talked about put off things in the mm-hmm. previous video. Now we're talking about putting away things. Yep. Yep. Uh, bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. Put them away. Don't act out of your emotions. Mm-hmm. Control your emotions. Don't let them control you. Yep. And, and that's, I mean, extremely. I, 
I don't know that it's one. Of, it's the hardest, but it's one of the harder things to do. Is you know because you're typically when you do that kind of stuff, you're in the heat of the moment. Yep. Something's going on. You get irritated. You get mad. You get frustrated. About it, you know, and it's like I just want to you know I want to do this. Oh right. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just I'm, it's I'm, just human. It's natural reaction to just fight or flight. Yeah, to just go. Huh? It's so hard to be like. Like I've already touched on, I guess I got ahead of myself. There are good ways to handle situations that trigger these emotions. There's proper ways to handle them. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because of our human nature, we don't. Um, we just, we're, we're just ready to punch back. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Yeah. It's, you know, the, the, that old man, that's, it's that old, old man, man comes man. back and flesh, hey, flesh man. takes over. We like to put him off, but he sure likes to jump on the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're, you're exactly right. Well, and I mean, you know, it's it's the, it's it's one of those. It's like it's the you know we're we're born spiritually dead. Uh, yeah. We're born sinners, yeah. and it's so so. That's what's as we've talked about a bunch. That's what's natural. I mean, it's what it's called human nature. That's what's natural. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard for us as as people to take that off and to put it away and to keep it away and for those things to not come back and rear their ugly heads. That's right. Which again goes back to what are you feeding? What are you meditating on? The more you're in the word, the more you're well, meditating sure. on it and feeding your, um, your alive spirit now. Yes. Yeah. Um, it it helps to fight those and, and keep those pushed away. Not that they don't come back, but it helps to fight to the, keep them at bay. They're going to come back. Um, and the more we stay in the Word, stay in our prayer life, it's easy to be reminded that we have God's mercy, which is we don't get what we deserve. Mm -hmm. We have God's grace, which is we get what we don't deserve. Mm -hmm. And we are full of God's kindness. He 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 did this to us because of his kindness. Mm -hmm. So when these situations come up, that's where our thought process needs to go immediately. Immediately, yeah. Immediately, because I'll guarantee you, they have not grieved us any more than what we've grieved God. And he was still kind enough to give us his mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. So we need to be kind enough to extend the same mercy. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, and, you know, you're no better than that person or no, we're no better than anybody no. else because we all have received those two things yes. that you just talked about, that grace and that mercy that that's right. Um, ever we've all received it. So, um, and mm -hmm. if we're going to, if we're going to react in a spiritually man, in a spiritual manner, that's the way we should. Yeah. God, I, I, I don't want God reacting to me the way I would react to Oh, somebody. yeah, yeah. So why would I, if I'm trying to be a Christ follower, uh -huh. why would I react any different? goes back to your favorite saying, what would Jesus do? Yep. Oh, well, Jesus would be kind and extend them grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. Now, I just told you, Jesus got mad. He goes in the temple screaming, telling them they're thieves, turning over tables, throwing mm -hmm. them out. I guess he was being kind. He could have squashed him like a bug. I mean, you know, um, but he handled the situation properly. Mm -hmm. There's ways to handle situations properly. Yeah. You know, it's not, we're not saying when somebody angers you or creates, triggers one of these emotions that you just roll over. Uh, maybe it is better to walk away. I mean, you know, so many times in life, anything that triggers one of these reactions is so petty and meaningless. Yeah, in the grand scheme of things. That even if you were to win the argument, what'd you are win? either one of you better for it? Yeah, what'd you win? I mean, right, we beat well, that, that, that Well, it leads right into the, to it, 32. It very well does. Um, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, and forgive one another as God <sighs> and Christ word. forgave you. Forgive as you have been forgiven. It's the way we should always be. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if you think they for, they, they deserve forgiveness, because they don't. No. But neither did we, That's and right. God forgave us. Yeah, it doesn't matter if they don't deserve it. Deserving has nothing to do with nothing. it. Nothing. 
Nothing. Nothing at all. This is how God treats us, and we don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. Show the same to others. Jesus is the example to follow. What would Jesus do? Jesus would read you the cross-references that go with (laughs) verse 32. (laughs) So we're going to go take a look at those. It's uh, Mark eleven twenty five and Luke six thirty seven. Sounds like we're fixing to find out what Jesus would do, because I bet this is in red. They are both in red, which is why I decided we are going to share them. So Mark eleven twenty five, and this is Jesus speaking, says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. That's right. And then we jump over to Luke 637, again, Jesus speaking. You'll all know this one. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Put off the old man. Put on the new man. Just as you take up your cross daily. Yep. Get in the word daily, pray daily, and put the new man on daily. And all, all this stuff gets easier. As as we said in the last video, as you start maturing, mm-hmm. this stuff gets easier. Yep. Yeah, because you're not going to mature if you're not in it. No. No, no, you won't. If you won't if, mature at if all. If you're not in it and you're not growing, that's not, I mean, that's mm. what maturity is, but it's not going to happen. And, you know, I mean, I, like everybody else, I struggle with a lot of these. Oh, yeah, we're humans. I'm better than I used to be. I do know that. I've seen yeah. that change. I mean, thank I've, you, thank you, Paul, for pointing out to me via the Holy Spirit what I already know, but didn't want to re like acknowledge to about myself. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> gee, thanks. Hit me on the head with that hammer. But you know, even though I sit here and say I'm better than I used to be, I have grown and I've seen that. From a personal standpoint, reading through some of this and studying it, I also saw where I have a long ways to go. It's just individual instances, mm-hmm. not as a whole, just individual instances. As I'm reading this and I'm thinking about things in my life, the way things are going and certain situations, I'm like, yeah, still got a long ways to go. As a reminder to ourselves, let our focus be that throughout this life, we live and die in a way that when we are thought of, it's Christ that is remembered. Christ be known. And remember, God loves you.